Good afternoon. Uh, I have my AQ t-shirt on. Thank you, Micro. Uh, today we're gonna build the AQ Mini and we're gonna look at my wounds in high definition. There you go. One year ago I got this or these three scars. This. Anyhow, the AQ Mini we have an ESD pad here. These pads here, uh, they are very well pre tinned right now, and you don't want to touch them too much with your finger because that adds a lot, a lot of um, fat uh, and moisture and stuff to them. So the solderings won't be as good then. Um, so you want to keep them clean. The quality of the PCB is is really really good because it's got uh, these uh, vias that uh, are really good quality which won't fall out like on the spark fan boards because they're pretty fragile these little pads here they easily pop off what it's got besides the um, regulating stuff is uh, that it's um, it's got this peripheral uh, uh, vias that um, these two up here will um, be the, your transmit receive from the UART of the uh, at Mega. Um, these will be your BEX, your uh, regulators from your ESCs, plugged in from your uh, ESCs here. And uh, these will be your, I think, 5 volt I2C connections from the at Mega, straight from the at Mega. And these connectors will be your 3.3 volt uh, I2C connectors, which is the low low voltage side of this uh, level converter. And um, these are for external analog uh, channels, which got uh, 5 volt and uh, ground too. We got this nail clipper, which is really flat and nice, so we can cut the components uh, really uh, really tight so we get a flat surface uh, under here we got a pair of pliers for bending components and we have a, uh, a knife we have blue tack so we can fix the components when we, when we are soldering and we have some acetone uh, that's alcohol and we got our soldering wire, we got our soldering tip, which we uh, will try to uh, apply some solder to and uh, rinse it off the sponge continuously. We also got a cup of coffee, because that's needed. With this nice little bag, um, install gyro first it says, I'm not gonna follow that, because I'm a rebel. Uh, we got this... Um, uh, headers and we got this one uh, N4001 um, diodes. The LiPo comes in here through this uh, diode and it powers the uh, 5 volt regulator of the Pro Mini, which is 150 mi uh, milliamps, which is in turn providing 150 milliamps to the Atmega 328 and the receiver. My, re my receiver is uh, 80 milliamps plus 60 milliamps approximately for the Atmega 328 which is 140 milliamps so it's kind of on, on the edge of what this uh, regulator can handle um, I have noticed that it turns off if you um, if you try to pull uh, too many amps of it uh, but it shouldn't be a problem yeah, just so you know, 150 milliamps for this. We've also got the uh, 250 milliamp 3.3 uh, volt regulator, so it will be more than enough. When you plug in the uh, USB voltage, you will have uh, power through this diode, and um, it will go uh, and power your receiver, it will power your Atmega, and it, it will power your 3.3 volt regulator because it's a low voltage dropout so even if this diode drops one volt 
uh, this uh, regulator here will power your sensors which is uh, at 3.3 volts so it will be totally fine uh, these two resistors are what's supposed to be the divider resistors these two in the schematic so high side here and here we will have um, the 15k resistor and here we will have the 7k5 and it divides scales the battery uh, voltage to uh, a 0 to 5 voltage line here so we can read it with the analog to digital converter and um, what we want to do is measure this as accurately as we can I put it in 20k mode because I'm gonna measure in case of ohms and we're gonna see what we have here and later uh, somehow document what we got so what do we got we got 7.46 so that's what we're gonna write into the define for uh, the R2 resistor 7. Point, yeah 47 okay uh, we take the next one we measure it polarity doesn't matter since we're measuring measuring ohms okay 14.63 okay uh, these values if we uh, put them in the defines uh, will make the battery monitor of this board uh, as accurate as my multimeter and that makes me happy now we will assemble the uh, mini shield yeah they are supposed to go in here uh, 15k 7k5 but this resistor is a 7k5 I see that because it's um, it's purple that's 7 it's green that's 5 and it's 2 so it's two zeros 752 zeros 7500 ohms so we have installed that and we're gonna install the other uh, this is the 15k uh, which is one um, for brown and five and three so it's one five and three zeros I have uh, soldered the caps in like so pretty flat and we will solder them on the top side like this and here so what we're gonna do is solder this in to this uh, these wires and um, the special thing about this is we gotta bend this pin this middle pin to fit in this TO92 package uh, spacing and I will grab the middle pin and bend it right below that uh, little point you see there outwards and back inwards and to make it stick uh, like this I'm rather gonna trust this uh, <coughs> this blue tack or uh, adhesive clay or whatever you wanna call it and uh, put it on here so I know that it sticks when I turn it around to solder uh, we call it heft massa. That's what I done with the uh, RCL components too. I put it on here, uh, tried to not make contact with the uh, pins when I solder because that gets messy. So we're gonna turn it upside down, and what we're first gonna do is take our uh, nail clipper, uh, like a one like this. So. Uh, I'm gonna cut it off like this 
and then take another go that's because this one is a little short and as you can see I go very very close to the board so I've preheated the um, soldering iron I've got my uh, super solder here which is uh, a three channel flux um, solder and uh, pay attention to this um, this straight mark here on the silk screen the the white line and you have the right pinout for this uh, 3302 regulator okay so uh, we'll put it upside down and solder these three clipped off uh, connectors so what we'll do is heat the via around it and the lead and I'll apply some some solder to it while it's hot and I'll take off the solder while it's still hot and remove the tip later pretty good solders here and we'll take a look at them a little closer like this what you want is for the uh, connections to be shiny we'll accept this if we don't we take e either our um, uh, solder wick I think it's called like this and apply here heat it up and let it suck up the the solder we can also take our uh, desoldering uh, desoldering majingi here and you can see that the solder has uh, molten all the way through the board and come up on the other side too so we're gonna call that good I think uh, now we got the power section done we got it soldered we got the capacitors on the output of the 3.3 volt regulator done we got the two resistors done next up is the diode I'm only going, gonna put in the uh, the diode from the LiPo batteries it's gonna go from V in which is the LiPo battery goes uh, through here and through there and it all also says on the board uh, this little uh, tip here is the marking which is uh, in silver here yeah anyhow I will put off these little flaps which it comes with and and then I'll uh, check out the track or the spacing and I will bend it accordingly like so and we will try to put it in and not trying to get uh, any moisture or uh, fat on or grease <laughs> I think it's called on these pads so now it's pretty nice we're gonna put some blue tack or uh, whatever you wanna call it on here to fasten it from this side like this so this prevents it to go anywhere uh, first of all I will clip off these leads with the nail clipper then um, save these these little leads so you can use them for jumpers and just take the uh, pliers and put it in the correct slot and then you can bend it and it will be a, a perfect uh, jumper I will clip this uh, these endings off with the pliers which is really flat like this and like this solder so heat it well apply solder let it heat up and release it's a good sign if it's uh, going through the board so you can see it on the other side